It's pain that drives an urgency to seek a cure. And this is what God is doing. But it presses the question that Jesus would later ask at the pool of Bethesda, which was one of the sites that, that my wife and, and I and you know, 38 of our closest friends got to visit uh, in the past couple of weeks in Israel. The pool of Bethesda is where Jesus encounters a man who has been disabled and immobilized for 38 years. And, and Jesus asks this man a very curious question. Do you want to get well? It was a serious question. And the answer wasn't guaranteed because begging, which was how this man made his living, was a legitimate profession in those days. And to get well would mean that this man who had been immobilized for 38 years would no longer be able to beg and he would have to find some other way to become employable. Learning a new skill would be costly to a man who had gotten so accustomed to his disability. The truth is that Israel and many of us would rather continue in the familiarity of unhealth than to do the work of getting and staying healthy. It's right there in Hebrews 12, which I just quoted, which starts, consider Jesus who for the joy set before him, for the joy that he was looking toward in an eternity future, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, hating the suffering, despising it, naming it, sweating blood over it. And yet for the joy that was ahead of him, he endured. This is an invitation to put everything in perspective and, and, and to remember that this life, which does include all kinds of trials and tribulations and sufferings, for some much more intense than others, and it currently seems arbitrary, it currently seems completely unfair and unjust, but if we take the 70 or 80 or 90 years that we are given here and then we compare them against the infinite days of no more death, mourning, crying, or pain, the infinite days of the joy that is set also before us because of Jesus, it puts things in perspective and it actually, if, if our hearts can hear it, gives the long-term eternal advantage to those who have suffered in Christ the most. Eternal joy is proportional to temporal pain. The more pain Christ walks us through here and now, the more joy we will have forever, for infinite days. 